Hi guys, in this video I'll be clock rating your footage. Yes, not mine, but yours. We'll go through five different clips and we go through the color grading for each of those clips. And uh, I'll be showing you so many little color grading uh, secrets that you might feel a bit dizzy afterwards. <laughs> So um, this channel has a Facebook group and where we chat about all kind of video related stuff, problem solving, gear, business, whatever comes to mind. And some time ago I asked you guys to send me some uh, video clips for color grading and you did and here we are color grading them. This might be a rather intense video but you'll learn a lot and I will be moving fast so remember to kind of replay if you need to. And I'll be working in Premiere Pro, but the principles are similar in all software, so just try to get the idea and then apply the same principles to whatever software you're using. For example, I learned most of my color grading techniques from watching uh, Photoshop tutorials. So try to do the same. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get into Premiere and let me kind of explain this project uh, file. Uh, this first track, video track number one, is where the main footage lies. And then uh, the video track 2 uh, to 4, uh, I'm using these to add effects. And then this video track number 5 is where the original footage is for easy comparison. And if it was shot in log, I have applied a simple lookup table to make it look more normal. And by toggling these eyes, we can activate and hide tracks. And this layer is for color management for Premiere Pro, and you don't need to worry about it. I'll do a video about color management in Premiere Pro later. And then a bit about the effects that I use for color grading. Uh, the backbone is the Lumetri panel effect. And uh, by the way, you can use as many Lumetri panel effects as you want. You just copy and paste them on here in the effects, effects control panel. But the thing is that you can only use the lowest one in the actual Lumetri panel. So I'll be working only in the effects, uh, effects control panel. And then the order effect is very important. It happens from top to bottom. So it, it, uh, the end result will be different if you apply the effects in different orders. And uh, I, but I might not still show the effects. I might not go through the effects in, in that order, but just that you know that the effects order is important. So let's start. So this first clip is a car uh, that uh, in this one I aimed for a natural HDR look with the punch like a summer car ad or something. So let's start from scratch. And as you can see, this was shot in Vlog. So the first effect that I did, I applied a highlight recovery with the HSL secondary uh, targeting the sky, making it a bit darker and bluer. Then we go to color correction. I added the lookup table from the color correction kit for the G5. Uh, and I adjusted the white balance and did some other adjustments as well. And then I used the curves to give the shadows a bit more strength. And with the HSL secondaries, I made the sky even bluer. And then I used a Lumetri curve for adding a bit of softness to the footage. So, uh, Lumetri, Luma curve, sorry. Luma curve is a different curve than RGB curve. RGB curves affect all uh, the channels, so Luma, uh, Luma channel and the color channels. But Luma curve only affects the Luma, uh, luminance uh, channel and it leaves the colors alone. So it's a nice method of uh, making your footage less uh, video harsh by removing a bit of contrast with the Luma curve. So it will make it more, more high-end and more soft. And then the next one is an orange boost. And in this I used the HSL secondaries to just target the uh, orange areas and made them darker and more orange. And that gave a uh, kind of depth to the colors in this footage. And there is this nice contradiction like color contrast between the orange and the blue-red, <coughs> blue-green of the car. Then uh, I targeted the car uh, with the tracking. I tracked a mask on top of the car and with the HSL secondaries I even targeted the car even further and uh, I added some contrast and I, was, I just made the car pop. And by the way in this uh, Lumetri uh, panel HSL secondaries I often have blur and it's very important to make the um, image more, um, that it, the, the limits of the effects are not so visible. And then we go to this, the HDR layer. And uh, this is a layer that is, this is a method for 
um, like smart exposure blending. It's the same footage on top of itself. Uh, and by the way, this method needs log footage that you start off with the log footage, uh, otherwise it won't work the same way and without any effects applied on it. <clears throat> anyway, and um, I have made this uh, footage look like this interesting uh, animated blob of gray and I have done it by inverting it and then using the blur effect to make it very blurry. And by this you can see that the highlight areas, if, you, if we toggle this off on the, on the lower image, we can see that on, the, on top of the highlight areas the grey uh, is a bit darker and on the shadow, area, shadow areas the grey is lighter. And then when I blend this layer with a vivid blending mode, or optionally overlay blending mode, or optionally soft light blending mode, we get this very intelligent exposure blending that is automatically animated based on the footage that we used as a base. And um, this, the nice thing about this effect is that this method is that this reserves the local contrast of your footage. As he, here you can see it's the blur effect that does that. As you can see if we toggle the blur off you can see that it kind of takes the local contrast away. But when we add the blur back you can see that uh, the dynamic range is uh, the, it's still a high dynamic range but the local contrast is there. And then of course the strength of this layer can be adjusted with the opacity uh, uh, percent. And in this case, I needed to add a denoise uh, denoiser to this footage because we're pushing and pulling it quite a lot, and there was a bit of noise in there. Uh, the noise became visible, so I added the denoise effect. Uh, this is a neat video uh, denoiser, which I like. Okay, then let's go to the next one. This is a clip of uh, like a forest shot, and this is actually a, a rather common situation that with these digi digital uh, cameras, you don't you get this kind of very harsh video look when you are shooting forest. And I wanted to make it look more uh, lush. And uh, this was not shot in log, so we don't have to convert it. Anyway, so the first thing that I did, I softened the look, as I said, with the Luma curve. And then I added a, lo a Lumetri panel effect. And with the HSL secondaries, I targeted the shadow areas and I made them brighter and uh, added some warmth and uh, gave them some contrast. And then the pretty similar um, thing, I uh, targeted the green leaves with the HSL secondaries. I made them warmer and greener, I made them brighter and I added uh, contrast. And then here I want to show you something. This is actually very important when you do these HSL secondaries and you play around uh, with the settings. It's easy to um, kind of uh, to stumble upon this problem with this uh, low quality codex is that there is this color pulsing. So actually the color is not uh, staying steady uh, in the footage, but it's actually kind of fluctuating. And if you're not uh, careful, this will um, kind of affect the mask on your HSL secondaries. And you will get this pulsing, as you can see here. So try to be more careful on your uh, what you choose, that you don't get this pulsing. And that's why it's important to have the video playing when you do this uh, selection, not only have it like not do it on based on just one single frame because then you might end up just um, having this pulsing. Okay, <clears throat> and then <clears throat> uh, I just added an RGB curve and I made the image a bit more darker, darker and with these color curves I gave it a bit of tone. Okay, then we go to the next one. This is a nice uh, guy playing guitar in a moody shot and I wanted that mood to be even stronger or more moody, if that's even a word. And this was shot in vlog, so we'll start. So with the color correction, I uh, used a uh, lookup table from the color correction kit for the G85. And in this case, this is the uh, high 1S lookup table, which is uh, a new lookup table that will come in the version 3. And then I adjusted the white balance. And, and then, because I do, did like the blueness of the footage when it was the uh, white balance was a bit off, uh, with the HSL secondaries, I uh, target the neutral colors in this image. and. I kind of recovered the blue vibe to them. And then I did a shadow boost, so targeting the shadow areas, making them brighter. And then I uh, targeted the skin tones with the HSL secondaries again. I'm using the HSL secondaries all the time. And, uh, and the idea here is that I'm giving them extra punch, like a lot of saturation, that they will be, that they, I'm emphasizing the contrast between the blue room and the orange skin. And then I added this RGB curve and I lifted the blacks to give this kind of a milky shadow look. And then I added a quite a long, a quite a strong coloring with the color curves. Okay. Whew. <laughs> I'm, 
Ooh, we are really going fast. So if you like this, subscribe to the channel. <sighs> okay, let's go to the bird one. So <clears throat> this is going to be a tough one to explain because there was a lot of uh, going on, but I'll try my best. Um, I wanted to, this bird to look really metallic and really three-dimensional. And uh, by the way, this was not shot in lock. So let's see uh, what I did to make it look more three-dimensional. Uh, so the first thing that I did, I deepened the colors and I used the Lumetri panel effect and I targeted the most saturated colors in this image. And then I made them more dark and more saturated. That's kind of an easy way of making your footage more like deeper is by targeting the whole highly saturated colors and making them darker. Then I think the orange was a bit too strong. So then I decided to desaturate the orange areas. And then uh, I wanted to add a bit of um, like focus to the bird and I did that with an RGB curves with the mask. Um, I uh, tracked the, ma the bird and then I inverted the mask. So now I'm actually applying the effect everywhere else but not the bird. And I'm removing contrast and making the rest of the frame a bit more boring. So then you're automatically more focused on the bird. Then I use the softness uh, uh, Luma curve again. Then I added the softness with the Luma curve and this is often, it's actually good to have this as the first thing in your stack. And then we go to this uh, other layer. And this is a trick that I have actually made a whole video about. This is a very powerful trick on how to play around with contrast and color in your footage. So this is uh, an RGB curves on an adjustment layer uh, with overlay blending mode. And the first thing that I uh, do with this is I uh, lower the contrast a lot and then I can move these color sliders, uh, color curves uh, rather aggressively. And this method kind of protects the footage and gives it really nice, it gives me more control. If you want to know more about, there's a video where I talk about this uh, technique uh, in detail. Okay, <clears throat> then this is going to be a bit difficult. This is uh, uh, rather similar to the HDR technique that I showed earlier, but this is more, a bit more complicated. To do this, the first thing that you have to do is to copy this, copy the footage on top of itself and then you nest it. And then you go inside the nested footage and you remove all effects from the, uh, all color effects from the footage. And then you add an adjustment layer on top of it. And then you put the adjustment layer into vivid light blending mode. Then you invert it and then you add blur and you can adjust the radius of the blur to taste. And now you can see this is um, kind of we have removed all that, we have almost made the whole image black and white and gray, but we now have kind of an extra layer of local contrast. And then we go to the parenting uh, sequence and we put this uh, nested uh, clip to overlay blending mode. And now you have a nice uh, local contrast boost to your footage. And by the way, you can adjust the strength by using the opacity. And then another way of adjusting uh, how this local contrast affects your footage is to use a curves effect on this. So then you can kind of lower the highlights and making like target the highlights or the shadow areas. So now we have the local contrast layer, but I want to target only the bird. So I want to only add local contrast to the bird. And to do that, I have created a tracked mask on top of the bird and then to dial in the selection even further, I have created a new layer of the same footage, the original footage uh, here. And then I have made it into a black and white map with the Lumetri uh, HSL secondary uh, by clicking this icon, choosing the black and white option and targeting uh, with this uh, selections I've targeted just the blue of the bird. And then I'm adding a track map effect on the local contrast layer and using the black and white map on top of itself I'm using to target only the bird with this effect. Okay, and the thing that I needed to do here is to add a denoiser because we again were pushing and pulling the footage quite a lot, so we needed to uh, denoise it a bit. Okay, so then the next one, the last one, the fifth. Um, this one, uh, I wanted to create a, like a blockbuster look because when I saw, saw this footage, I immediately saw that, okay, this has the potential with that. And this was not shot in log. Uh, though it's rather log-like, uh, log so maybe it's some other profile that is very flat. So we'll start off with color correction. And uh, I'm intentionally not fixing the white balance here because I want to leave this blueness to this footage. I'm leaving it rather blue, just adjusting it with adjustments and with uh, rather aggressive curves. 
and then I go uh, with another Lumetri panel, I go into the skin tones and I, um, instead of fixing the white balance, I'm just correcting the skin tone uh, with the HSL mask. So now we have like this nice uh, proper skin tone but really bluish image. And then I actually do the same thing with the blues, so making the blues even darker and bluer and doing it again with the HSL secondaries. And then I'm using the Luma curve again as before to soften the image and then I wanted to um, uh, emphasize the orange on the background, these lights here. So I did it with an HSL secondary and a mask because I didn't want to affect the face. I didn't want to make the face orange. So I created a mask on top of the face and then I just inverted it. So kind of protecting the face area from uh, this effect. And again, we're using the HSL layer. It's a high dynamic range layer, as I explained before. And let me show you this. If uh, the blur effect is very important, because if I turn the blur effect all the way down, you can see that it makes the whole footage quite flat. But then if I uh, put the uh, blur back in, it gives this footage almost just like a dutch and burn effect. So it's a really nice way of making the features pop out. And I guess this is quite often used in Hollywood blockbusters to give the footage a lot of local contrast. And then, because this were again pulling and pushing, I needed to add the denoiser effect here as well to make it more clean. Oh, done. Okay, that was a, quite a ride. Um, and <clears throat> if you want to try this yourself with the same footage, these, all these techniques with the same footage, uh, I have extracted a TIFF image, a high quality TIFF image from each of these uh, clips and you can work with those and you can go to the Facebook group and you can find those stiff images there and then you can try to do the same things with the same footage. Instead of the, uh, download the, downloading the big files you'll just need one single TIFF image and then you can try to do the same things with the same footage. Instead of the, uh, download the, downloading the big files you'll just need one single TIFF image and you can kind of practice with that or then you can practice with your own footage. Okay and um, <clears throat> I must say that and this was a really good exercise uh, for me to practice my skills as a colorist because normally you have so many clips, like similar clips uh, in your video project that you want to rush through them. It's just like, oh, I don't want to use too much time on each of these clips. But in this case, I was able to focus on each clip just like it would be a photograph. And that was actually a really good thing. My mind worked a bit differently. I was able to kind of really analyze what's happening and what I want to emphasize and what I want to de-emphasize. And, um, <clears throat> and I don't recommend that you try to use all of these tricks and methods that are used in this video in all of your videos. But I hope you got some ideas on some, something that you can use. And uh, this could be some kind of a, almost like a small library. That what you, when you need something like this, you just come back to this video and check it out. And uh, this is of course, uh, very, this video is very fast and it's really hard to understand everything at once. But here on YouTube, I don't know if you know, but you can replay videos as many times as you want. And if you think this was helpful, consider sharing this video with someone, maybe on a Facebook group with your friends or colleagues. That would help me a lot. Okay, and if you're interested to know more about color grading, uh, color correcting and a bit about color grading, I have a free course for the GH5 and other Panasonic Lumix users. Uh, you can check it out here. It's part of the color correction kit that I used in this uh, videos as well, but uh, it's free. The course is free, so you can get it. You can get, uh, join the course even though you might not get the color correction kit. And talking about the kit, I'm launching a new version of the uh, color correction kit soon. So actually, just after uploading this video, I will be just going back to the uh, kit and try to get it up as soon as possible. So if you have the color correction kit already, you will get the new version in uh, no time. Comment below if you think this was useful and you want to see more content like this in the near future. And of course, subscribe to the channel. Okay, see you in the next one.